Okay, thank you for joining me today as I demonstrate some of the Primavera P6 longest path functions that are available to you. I've set up a sample project here in order to aid with the discussion. I have two areas of work, area A, area B, and if you look at, uh, it's not very complicated, so we can visually analyze this, which as you know, uh, once you get a few hundred activities, you can no longer visually analyze it. But for the sample, we'll, we'll go with the simple. So by visual inspection, you would expect that when we ask what the longest path to this project is, it'll go somewhere through area B and up to the final one. So there's some built-in functions in Primavera P6. And the first one is called Longest Path Filter. This is a filter that's available in the default section and it's titled Longest Path. So let's turn that on and see what happens. That's interesting. It did not produce what we were thinking, which was a nice waterfall effect of that. So that leads me to caveat number one when using the Longest Path Filter which is the function looks for the final activity in your schedule. Whether you intended that to be a significant activity or not, it will go to that activity and start working backwards, looking for the driving predecessor. So in this case, this says start of winter restriction, and it was really meant to be a graphical reference just to remind people that when we reach December 16th on this project, we start entering a winter restriction period. So let me do this. Let me, let me take that activity, make it go away. So I'll change this constraint from a start on to a start on before, and I will schedule again. And then let's bring up everything again. And let's try again. So that activity is gone. So let's try it again. Let's bring up the longest path filter turn it on. There we go. A nice continuous path of activities back to the start of the project. So that's a very handy filter. Uh, something definitely to remember because in a simple network it, it will do what exactly you think it does which is identify the longest path in the project. And now I have to warn you about caveat two. So caveat one was if you've got anything to the right you didn't mean to be analyzed. It will be analyzed anyway. Caveat number two is no gaps allowed. The critical path must be continuous. So let me make it non-continuous by taking out this activity from the logic. I'll just remove the predecessor and I will schedule again. And we'll bring back all the activities and then we'll run the filter. Longest path turned on and as you can see it went to the final activity, worked its way back to activity BH and BH had a gap behind it. In other words the predecessor was not driving it. A, a, in this case a constraint was. Let's bring everything back to take a look. So there's a gap caused by a primary constraint and you can see by the star and so that's caveat number two. So as long as you're aware of those two caveats, uh, that's a very handy thing. So what else can we do in Primavera? There's, there's another built-in function, and the title of that is called Multiple Float Paths. I'm going to bring up these columns here so we can look at that and how it works. And where do you find that? You find that on the Scheduling Function screen. But before you hit Schedule, open up the Options. And go to the advanced tab whose sole purpose is to offer this function to you create multiple float paths we're going to choose total float uh, today's discussion is not about total versus free float and then we're going to choose the final project completion activity now mind you and this is something to remember that demonstrates the power of this function is you do not have to choose the final activity. If you wish to analyze some activity in the middle to see what's driving that activity, this is a very good function to remember. You can do that, especially when you have complicated projects with interim milestones and like that. So 
that's something to keep in mind. For the first round, let's, let's use the project completion just to show what happens. As far as the number of float paths, I'd recommend a handful. That usually gets you what you need to see for the activities you're interested in. You, you can't say one because whenever there's a split in a path or path coming backwards when the paths merge with other non-critical paths or lesser critical paths, Primavera needs to give them a unique number to keep it all straight. So start with a handful and see what that gets you. Okay, so let's close that. Let's go ahead and hit the schedule button. There we go. Now these columns, these two columns have been populated. This column is float path number, and this column is float path order. In other words, for a given float path, for float path five, for example, it has the fifth most critical float. Uh, it shows you the order, which is self-explanatory. Uh, so anyway, we wanted to know project completion it's interesting, you can still see the red color from the longest path function still coloring the longest path activities red. But then we need confirmation that we'll, even though there's a gap, what's the next driving one? And as you can see, up here in area A, the lowest number float path is 5. And these two didn't even get a number because it would have been higher than 5. And same down here, they didn't get a number. So all the lower number float paths are down here. So, so you as a schedule engineer, you can, you can kind of put two and two together and see that the driving path started on the gap activity, and then float path number two was the project start activity, and then float path number three was everything from project completion back to the gap activity, and finally float path four were these other activities in, in area B. B, and there you have it. So again, it's more complicated than the longest path filter, but more powerful as well. So that's my demonstration of two functions available to you in Primavera to help you analyze schedules to identify the longest path. So I hope you enjoyed that, and uh, please join us again for another Primavera technical webcast in the future. Thank you.